Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of Paradigm Shifts in Educational Comedy. Uh, happy Father's Day, everyone. And um, I am very tired at the moment. So, yeah, please forgive any spaciness or weird speech on my part. But anyway. I just got through watching this little bit, total emergency alert, elite now evacuating, etc, etc, etc. And in a part of this, Alex said something to the effect of, if there is some sort of positive way of looking at this that maybe he missed, that... Um, he would like to know what that is. And even though me personally, you know, Alex is a busy guy and, you know, who am I, right? I don't get 10 million views a day. I'm not well known worldwide. The chances of Alex even seeing this, much less taking the time to, to, to listen to it, um, are remote at best. But, even so, I'm going to put it out there anyway. Because if it does any of you any good, then cool. Because obviously, Alex isn't the only person who has the concerns that he has. So obviously, anybody who has similar concerns, I would hope at least that they too are searching for the silver lining on the dark cloud that they haven't just surrendered to the fear-based brainwashing and just gone oh well you know that's it you know this is this is it this you know doom and gloom and misery and shit's the only real reality and oh no need to look at anything else hopefully a lot of you have not dived into that form of collective Stockholm Syndrome and collective suicide and that there are in fact a lot of you out there who are looking for a more positive way of viewing this. Now before I get into what that positive way is let me clarify my context of what I mean by a positive outlook on it and also simultaneously clarifying what I don't mean. I'm not about to talk about some supposed good faction in the military calling in Superman to save us. I'm not going to be talking anything about Drake's plan or Benjamin Fulford or Cobra's E.T. buddies or David Wilcox or, you know, none of that. I'm not going to be framing it in some sort of fish shaking truther logic of oh we can rise up and defeat the new world order by doing exactly what the new world order wants to do let's ignore our own hypocrisy and if anybody says we're hypocrites we'll call them a troll and a shill you know um not going there either not going into any sort of new agey oh lovey lady do 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 i'm just going to pretend i'm ascending into the fifth dimension and ignoring everything while the world burns and then finally when it gets my turn to burn i'm gonna go oh shit how did that happen i'm supposed to be ascending into the fifth dimension well i got a news flash for you people you're already ascended everything's energy everything is existing at one singular point in space time this is quantum physics this is uh superposition you know, this is the, this is Heisenberg. You're about a hundred years too freaking late on that. You know, this is old news. This is older than old news. This news is older than the Model T. So basically, with these paradigm blindfolds that everybody has on, they are in the very room, the ascension. They are in the room. They're already in the room that they're looking for. They're desperately looking for it. They've just got all these blindfolds on. So they're slapping into the walls and tripping over the furniture and and bumping into spikes and 
you know, hurting themselves and feeling victimized and going, oh, woe is me. I wish I could find this room that's on another planet in another galaxy, in another universe, on some other realm of reality, when really the very room that you've been searching for all along, you're already in it. It's just when somebody says, you know, if you take off all the blindfolds, you'll see the room. They respond with, you're being negative. Shut up. I'm going to show you, you dark person. So I'm just like, all right, whatever. So yeah, um, my positive perspective is not based on trying to appease people. It's not trying to stick what I'm saying in some box. It's not trying to conform to appease Alex or to appease the truth movement or to appease the New Agers or to appease the Republicrats or to appease, appease the Demicans or appease the Libservatives or appease the Caniverals or appease anybody. Because right now, as the fear and panic is kind of kicking up a little bit, Everyone is in appeasement mode, it seems. Oh, I want to be appeased or I want to appease others. I'm in my hateful fist shaking. I want people to, to tell me I'm right so that I can feel good about myself. Or I'm, I'm in my victimization and I think the world's going to end. And I want people to tell me I'm right so I can at least get the high of feeling justified in my pseudo-righteousness and blah, 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 blah. I've been seeing it online all over the place. You know, dare to, you know, even have a difference of opinion and someone's going to cry like a little bitch. So, okay. This positive spin that I have on this is exactly one of those things. It doesn't fit into any box. Um, people are addicted to their, you know, to feeling butthurt and self-righteous. And a lot of them are standing there going, the world's ending. That's all I'm willing to believe. I've had all my bad negative experiences. I'm not willing to look at anything else. And anybody who tells me otherwise is a horrible person and a minion of Satan or delusional or, or a government shill or blah, 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 blah. Fine. You know, I respect your right to those opinions and if you want to think that way of me or anything I'm saying, that's cool. I really have absolutely no problem with that. I fully respect people's rights to think what they want. So with that said, let's get down to brass tacks. So here was Alex. I'm not going to like play the whole video through, but you know, he made, he made some, some talking points. Um, he was explaining how, you know, the elites are evacuating, how world events seem to be kicking up a bit, and in his view, he thinks that, that this must mean, you know, full-blown Jade Helm, full-blown World War Three, full-blown New World Order lockdown. Otherwise, why would these elites be evacuating these areas? You know, why Why would they be doing that if we weren't about to participate in the Hunger Games, so to speak? Why, why would they be doing that? Well, could it be, could it actually be people like me, I can only speak for myself, yeah, I've seen a lot of the bad stuff going down. I'm not denying that it's there, but there's a lot of good stuff that's happening at the same time, too. The people caught in their addictions to the fear paradigm that the mainstream news media got them hooked on. They don't want to look at that stuff. They go, oh, no, that's delusional. That's airy-fairy. The only real reality is misery and suffering, and we're all fucked. And if anybody says anything else other than that, it's airy-fairy delusion. Well, guess what? I have seen a major, 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 major awakening process unfold. I've seen people start to awaken that I would have never thought in a thousand years that they could have possibly awakened. I would have thought that I would win the lottery every day for one year before them awakening would ever be possible. I have seen some amazing, 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 super positive shit, 
super positive, just as much, if not, dare I say, more than the negative shit. There's all this positive, good, excellent, awesome, wonderful awakening happening everywhere right now. And I don't mean the lovey, lighty, airy, fairy pretending to ascend, but really you're just smug and full of shit and shutting the world in your own apathetic complacency. No, I'm not talking about that kind of awakening. I'm talking about I can walk down the street and synchronistically bump into people who not only understand some of the world events now when they didn't understand four months ago, but they can talk about it calmly. They're not like, oh my God, the sky is falling. <laughs> they're calm about it. They're acting almost as if it's as if it's common sense, as if it's something they've always known, as if it's um, you know, as if it's like, oh yeah, well the sky is blue, the grass is green, you know, so what else is new? And I know even a year before. Those people wouldn't have been acting like that to that information if they had woken up a year before. They'd have been like Chicken Little. Oh my God, woe is me. The sky's falling. What is going on? I don't understand. Ah! You know. So all this crazy bullshit that has been a problem in the world for centuries, if not eons, all this corruption, this pathological meme that has infected both us and the would-be globalists, this pathological meme that has been inherited and passed down from generation to generation through various governmental systems, indoctrination systems that we laughably call education, so on and so forth. All of this is starting to break down, break apart, because the world is getting better. You could not have such an amazing rise in awareness if the world was not getting better. Imagine this just for a moment. Imagine going back in time to like the Middle Ages, right? Let's say you could bring a bus back with you. You know, school bus, public transportation, whatever. Now, of course, people back then, they got no frame of reference for what that is or does. So let's say you have it parked there and you take one of the locals you bring him on to the bus and one of the locals, he's, he's going to look at that bus and he's just going to think it's a funky looking building, right? I mean, there's no such a thing as big, huge, horseless carriages back in those days, right? So he's going to see it and go, okay, weird looking building. All right, well, whatever. Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll be curious and go into this weird, funky looking building and, you know, see what this is all about. So then you sit him down and you start the bus driving. There's, there's two possible ways that this medieval person can perceive their experience. Either they can assume that they are in a stationary building that is incapable of moving and that the land around them has now become demonically possessed by Satan and the land is uprooting and jumping around around them. This person could go into complete total fear and terror, thinking that it's the end of the world. Oh my God, the land is uprooting. It must be demons. Satan's here. Oh my God, we're fucked. Or he can see it for what it is. The land is as it always has been. It is the bus that is moving. That they are not actually in a stationary building they are in something capable of movement. And they can sit there thinking, I don't understand how this thing is moving forward. I don't see any horses. I don't see anything that could possibly move it forward, yet it is. So I'm just going to acknowledge the fact that this thing that I'm sitting in, that I thought was a stationary building, is capable of movement and that it is moving. So that's kind of where we're at right now. People's awareness, the awareness of humanity is continuing to raise. People are seeing through the lies and the BS. And it's offensive and it's scary. And people want to be like Luke Skywalker and go, no, that's not true. 
That's impossible. Such ill feelings, Luke. You know it must be true. <laughs> so we see a lot of that going on right now. And that's like the first initial stage that everybody goes through. I mean, let's be for real. The only way to have a full positive awakening is to deal with your demons and face your shit. That means all the deceptions inside of yourself that you've been programmed to tell these lies and to yourself and feel the, the, the reinforcement of that self-justification, that arrogant self-righteousness going, yeah, it's true. Fuck anybody who says otherwise. I'll fuck them up if they say otherwise. God bless America. I'm for freedom. But if you disagree with me, you need to die. Rawr. You know, so all this crazy insanity that you know, is indoctrinated into us through the school systems and through every aspect of society. So, of course, we're going to rage exactly how we've been programmed to react to things. Just total panic and anger and terror and self-justification and smug arrogance and so on. But once we calm down from that, you know, provided we didn't do anything stupid in the meantime, like jump off a bridge or go murder somebody and end up in prison for the rest of our lives with Big Bubba's our cellmate with the 12-inch dick and it's going to make us pick up the soap 16 times daily or whatever. As long as we didn't get ourselves into some kind of trouble, then most of us usually after getting all the piss and vinegar out of our systems, we start to calm down a bit. And we start to be more willing to see things more rationally. As, as we realize that no matter how much we scream and yell, it's not changing anything. So the only thing we could do is calm down and learn to understand. It. So then we get to that point. And I've noticed a lot of people getting to that point. A lot of people. I mean, granted, there's still more people than ever at that point of butthurt rage. But there's a lot, a lot of people that are moving into that calm. And these are the people that are capable of making really profound positive impact and changes on, on this earth once they figure out to how to and they're figuring it out pretty quickly. Things are accelerating very rapidly. And everybody in every type of group is getting these awakenings. Um, you know, even even Alex recently was like, oh my God, I've discovered consciousness. We're all we're all connected. There's intuition. There's this and that. And he was programmed to take that in a in a fearful way. And I don't blame him for that. You know, it's it's what we've all been trained to do. So of course that's gonna be our first reaction. I can't blame anybody for that. And so obviously when when Christians figure out that Jesus was talking about quantum physics and that he wasn't saying believe in the social title called Christ, otherwise I'm going to whoop your ass and send your ass to fry for all eternity. He was talking about all the works that I've done, also shall you do and greater still, that we're doing that every second of every day, quantum physics, and that we've created, through that physics, we've created this hell on earth. We have collectively co-created hell on earth. We, you don't, There's no pissed off toddler God going to toss us anywhere when we die because we combed our hair the wrong way with that power of Christ, if you want to call it that, or God's position, or superposition, or whatever you want to refer to that, you know, Heisenberg, all, all that. You can look into it if you don't know what I'm talking about. But with all that, we're, we're co-creating collectively hell on earth. We've been doing that. And Jesus is like, hey, guys, you're creating hell on earth. Don't you want to maybe do something else? But, you know, we ignore the message. It's like we want to feel justified. Oh, I'm justified. I'm right. Everybody else is my enemy. Fuck you. So we're shaking loose from those sorts of fits. The New Agers think, oh, shun the dark, love and light, shun the dark. But really, they're just, you know, apathetically being complacent and acquiescent and, and not facing themselves, not facing the problems, not seeing a negative circumstance is a positive opportunity for positive change. They just want to close up into their little ball and bubble and go la 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 I'm floating off into the higher dimensions. La da 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 da. And they're starting to realize that that's been a self-deception. That that's a crock of shit. That 
that the law of attraction is real, but that's not what it means. It doesn't mean shun the dark and ignore yourself, ignore your belief systems, and and be dicks to everybody, and 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 hope for a new car, and then it'll appear. And that's you know that's like believing in Santa Claus or the truth fairy or tooth fairy or something. That's you know that's all bullshit. So they're waking up to that. They're getting butt hurt, like Luke Skywalker. No, it's not true. Yes, quantum physics is your father. No, you know. So they're going. They're going through their thing. Everybody right now is is go is facing truth and moving through um, these realizations. And the elites, if you want to call them that, the globalists, the cabal, the Illuminati, the banksters, the capitalist scum fucks, what whatever, whatever you want to call them, whatever name works for you, whatever does it for you. They're in their awakening too. Because they they forgot that if you're a warden, you're still inside the prison. So they've been indoctrinated into this psychopathic belief system that if they don't babysit everybody and control the world, if they don't control all of their external stuff, that um, you know the world is over, doom and gloom. It's it's the end. Hostile bye bye. Because the human race will just implode. That's their belief system. You know that's. It's crazy, you know. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense, but they genuinely believe it. You know, the, it, it's, it's like thinking you could put out a fire with gasoline, or, you know, or to avoid, you know, butt rape, stick a pitchfork up your ass. I mean, you know, it makes no sense. It's like, it's like, oh, in order to stay healthy, to stab yourself in the leg a thousand times. It, it makes, it makes no sense. It's neurotic. It's stupid. But that's where the divine right to rule bullshit comes in. Then on the other side of the coin, you got the masses that are addicted to their their side of the coin. Oh, we need babysitters. We can't do anything on our own. We're dumb. We're stupid. We're incapable. We're born into original sin. We're we're wretches and we're yuck and you know collective Stockholm syndrome like a motherfucker. It's you know. That's all the stuff the Pharisees were preaching about. And Jesus is like, hey, guys, scribes and the Pharisees, now known as politics and organized religion. Jesus is like, yeah, scribes and Pharisees, they're all full of shit. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to them. But we still listen to them, you know, because that's – we don't know any better. I mean – I can't fault people anymore, really. I used to get like so mad, like how dare those people act like that? Don't don't they know that they're being scumbags? Don't they know that they're being hypocrites? Don't they know that they're doing what the globalists want them to do? Answer: No, they don't know. They honest to God, they don't know. But we're waking up, and the globalists are waking up, and the globalists are used to doing things in a certain way. They're used to the idea of okay. The methods that we use to control the people, this is what has always worked, this is what will work, and this is what forever shall work. They're arrogant. They're like, I am God. What I say is always right. And that is the only truth. You know. So there's, there's a, you know, the, the global stage has changed so much and so rapidly that even they don't have countermeasures for but they're still in this hubris, this arrogance of what has always worked will always work. I am God. I am George W. God Bush and my my demonic son, Obama. Everyone is a racist who doesn't agree with them. Barack scumfuck, he is there with me and forever we shall reign using the same stuff as always. And they've got like this high, high arrogance thing going. <coughs> So, uh, excuse me. So they're they're expecting all the old methods to work, and 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 they don't. You know, they try they try to pull their crap, and it falls apart. And they're like, "Why did that not work? That should have worked." I am God. I am the All Knowing. I am royal bloodline. Everything I have done has always worked. Woo ha ha! And always shall work forevermore. Woo ha ha! So why did it not work? I am angry and butthurt now. Wah! I am Obama. I'm going to cry like a little bitch. Because without my teleprompter, I'm just saying, um, um, and, um, um, and, and, um, and, and looking left and right to act as if I have just said something profound. Wah! So, yeah. 
right now, big, huge, chaotic, mental, psychological, and perceptual mess for everybody. For you, for me, for the would-be globalist elites, for everybody. You know, hot and cold's coming together, steam is being created. And what all this does, it, it prevents things like World War III. It prevents things like total collapses. And let's put this into perspective, okay? These globalists, whatever you want to call them, they have so much freaking technology. They could endgame everything right now if they wanted to. I mean... You know, if you don't think that they don't have enough tech to destroy the entire planet within the next 30 seconds, if they really wanted to, then, you know, you've been living in a, in a fluoride, you know, GMO infested freaking cave somewhere, popping Prozac or whatever. Because come on, they've got more than enough um, enough technology to end it all, bam, like that, if they really wanted to. So, why the dog and pony show? Doesn't anybody ever bother to really ask that bigger, deeper question? Why the dog and pony show? They have uh, all these drones, this, that, whatever. They could just wipe out massive population centers. Chicago, New York, Miami, Los Angeles. Those could all be gone in the next 30 seconds if they wanted them gone. You know, if they, they feel that we are the big enemy that that is standing in their way let's face it they could do away with way with us in 30 seconds they have the technology but instead of doing that they put on this dog and pony show as if our opinion is important somehow as if they need us for some reason and they need to trick us into approving of them and that if we don't ignorantly approve of them, they can't do anything of what they want to do. Has anybody ever bothered to ask why that is, huh? Why, why do they need us to look at all this and go, oh, yeah, that's going on? Has anybody ever bothered to ask that question? If it was just a matter of, oh, they want to kill us all, population reduction, you know, 95% going away, da-da-da. They could have done it already. Don't kid yourself. They could have. It would take them like all of 30 seconds. You don't think they got the weaponry? Ha! All of 30 seconds. And also think about it this way. Whatever underground bases they might have or whatever, a really, really pretty tomb is still a tomb. It's still a grave. It's still where you stash a rotting corpse. And... If they were to ruin the surface of the earth, they need the same things we do. You know, they can't live on radiation and vacuum. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And if they were to stay underground, that would only be able to maintain for a limited amount of time until it all died out. So, I mean, okay, you know. I really don't think that their idea of a victory is spending the rest of their days in a really comfortable grave. I really don't think that that's what they got in mind. And if you ask the question, why do they need us? Again, look into quantum physics. Look at how everything is connected. They literally cannot force their will on another. Now, let me clarify. You can force physical things on another. You can hit somebody. You can shoot them. You can, you can blow up a building, whatever. That's not what I'm talking about when I say force your will. I mean, you can't walk up to somebody and say, okay, you don't believe what I believe, but I'm going to make you right now. I'm going to make you believe what I believe, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm going to fucking make you, bitch. That doesn't work. Because when someone tries to use pressure to coerce you, the the understandable reaction is to be like, hey, fuck off, man, dude. What, what are you, control, control freak? You got a fetish or something? Get, get out of here, fool. It's not going to convince you of anything. So the only way you can 
quote unquote convince anyone of everything is through inspiration, not force. Hence, you know, the boiling frog experiment and so on and so forth. Um, if the individual wasn't powerful, if you were just poor little you, poor little me, I'm so weak, I can't do nothing. I am more retarded car. I'm not retarded. I'm a retarded car student. <laughs> if that was the only real reality, if you were just so, by default, just so stupid, just so incapable, just so weak, why would they have to pump billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars constantly into a system designed to repress humanity? If our default state was this violent, horrible, sinful thing, why would they have to pump billions and billions and billions of dollars to teach us how to be scumbags if scumbaggery wasn't our default? Does anybody ever bother to think about these things? Do they? No, because we weren't trained to. So are you seeing the positive yet, Mr. Alex Jones? Are you seeing the positive yet, everybody? The really good news, the really awesome, best fucking news ever? They're running scared because we are winning. We're not losing. It's not World War fucking three. We are winning. Now, don't get me wrong. When I say we are winning, I'm not saying we aren't living in dangerous times. I'm not saying that a group of military people can't come into your neighborhood and kill you. I'm not saying that the Gaza Strip can't keep getting bombed. I'm not saying any number of catastrophes and horrors can't happen. I'm not talking about a magic wand. I'm not saying, all right, everybody, real rest easy, folks, because, you know, your babysitter hero supermans come in, save the day. Everybody just relax. Don't need to do nothing now. Nothing to worry about here. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that bullies always feel victimized when they're not winning. And bullies are cowards. They only beat up on you when they have the high ground advantage. When they do not have the high ground, they run. They run because they are cowardly little pussy fucking bitches. They run. What do we see the elites doing right now? Running. Does this mean they're winning? Or does this mean they're losing? Think about it. And again, I repeat. An enemy who is losing is at their most desperate and dangerous like a cornered animal. So I'm not saying, oh, everything is fine, bunnies and kittens, and tra la, tra la, tra la. But what I am saying is because they are losing, which makes them more dangerous than ever, this means this negative circumstance is a really wonderful, positive opportunity for us to come together and create positive change. It is, it really, really is. And if we don't come together and do that, <laughs> we deserve to get destroyed, nuked, whatever. If we're not willing to do that, then don't, don't bother, you know, worrying or, or being fearful about nukes or destruction or whatever. If we get destroyed, we deserve to at that point. We've got it coming and fair is fair. But it doesn't have to go that route. And I personally don't think it will go that route. I don't think it's going that route. I see more and more people waking up and becoming more and more willing to do the right thing. Even in the face of all these half-awake idiots that when you dare have a difference in opinion, they call you stupid and a troll and a shill and a government agent or whatever paranoid delusion they're under this week. And they act... As if you have no right to express what you think and feel about anything. You have no right to be who you are unless you can prove it and quantify it and vet it and submit it through a board of inquiry of your peers and get it passed and stamped and notated and notarized. And th that's all globalist thinking. So when someone comes up to me like that, like, oh, you're not, you're not allowed to have your opinion unless I and this other board approve. My, my reply is, well, I respect your right to your opinion, but you and your board of approval can go fuck yourself. You, um, I don't 
owe you anything. I'm not obligated to, to meet any of your expectations. And if you think I am, please provide legal proof of claim, which of course I know they can't do. That usually shuts them right up. At that point, they're just like, Dave, you're a moron. Shut up. You know, then it ends right there. But yeah. So Alex Jones and anybody who listens to Alex and anybody else, I hope you listen to this. I hope I've made you think a little. I hope I've made you possibly see that, you know, maybe there's a silver lining on this dark cloud and there's a lot of positive opportunity here that we could take advantage of and really kick some ass and do some awesomeness and come together and get rid of a lot of these ego filters inside of us, dump a lot of this arrogance and this hubris and this this addiction to, to being justified. And at the very least, if you don't like somebody, at least respect their right to be who they are and just say, okay, you can be who you are. I don't like that, so I'm just not going to deal with you. End of story. No no judgment, no, no fighting with them, no conflict, just, all right, well, they're not my cup of tea. I'm going to go into a different direction. Or am I speaking too intelligently to be practical? Am I, you know, am, is what I'm saying too easy in a world that, that believes difficulty is the only real reality? And, and that anything being easy is a delusional, airy, fairy, you know, new agey pipe dream or whatever. Are you so addicted to your crack that you're not willing to open up to rehab? Because there's a lot of people who are getting over their crack addiction, so to speak. The addictions to their neural peptides, the chemicals in the hypothalamus that match the emotional frequency, literal frequency, like radio station, electrical frequency. Every emotion has a frequency. You run that frequency. It accesses your local pharmacy, CVS, Walgreens. It's built into your head. It's called a hypothalamus. The matching neuropeptide gets infused into your bloodstream. And if it's one of the more yicky emotions, one of the more bleh, it, the more yucky it is, the more corrosive the neuropeptide the more it's physically bad for you, the more it works with the fluoride and the GMOs and the poisons to help you kill yourself faster because of your addiction to fear, your addiction to trauma, your addiction to misery. There's a lot of people looking at that going, yep, I'm an addict and I don't want to be an addict anymore, so I'm going to move out of that. I'm going to live a better life. I'm going to help create a better world. And anybody who doesn't move out of it is fucked. GMOs are going to kill you. The fluoride is going to kill you. Your own state of being is going to kill you. Your belief system is going to kill you. You're dead and you're fucked, but humanity will be fine. Because in my view, enough of humanity is awakening and enough of humanity is saying, hey, you know, I've been taught to be a bit of shithead by a fascist system. I've been taught to be a Nazi, but, you know, I'm done with that. I'm done with my addictions to these justifications. I'm done. I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to activate that frontal lobe, the free will center of the brain that's able to go, hey, I'm looking at all this external information, but fuck the external environment. I'm going to do something different. Because without the frontal lobe, you couldn't have straw huts, which couldn't have evolved into houses and so on. You couldn't have invention. You couldn't have creativity. You couldn't have music. The default neural networks look around and say, this is my environment. It's always been this way. It always will be this way. Nothing I can do about it. The front alone says, fuck all that data. Let's use imagination. Let's see what I can do. Oh, what would happen if I put all this wood and straw and stuff together? Oh, look, a hut. I just invented a hut. But, you know, I don't like it. The water still gets in. Okay, so I'm going to mix mud with that and more straw and layer it and let it dry in the sun. And, and maybe maybe that'll keep the water out. Oh, wow, it does, you know. So our frontal lobe, free will choice, allows us to say, screw the external environment data. Screw what my peers say. Screw what my eyes say. Screw what my ears say, or ears hear. Fuck it all. I'm going to give myself permission to imagine, to dream. And I'm going to take what I dream, and I'm going to try it in practical application in physical reality. I'm going to see if it works. If it doesn't, that's okay. I can learn from those mistakes. I can see what went wrong. I can refine my idea. I can try again. Thomas Alva Edison once said, you know, um, I have not failed. I simply discovered 10,000 ways to not make a life model. We always think that 
not knowing is a dead end when it's actually the beginning of knowledge. <clears throat> we think that failure makes us weak and horrible and stupid and hopeless when really it's just a part of the process of trial and error. It's how human beings learn. Because for a long time we've forgotten that we're human beings. We've been the fucking board, man. We've been the Romulans. We've been the Ferengi. These are archetypes. You know, been there, done that, it has sucked. And many of us are saying, you know, time for something better. And that's what's being created. And for those of you who don't know, look up 100th monkey. The, the 100th monkey syndrome. It's, it's, stop, it's stopping their head. It's something that happened to monkeys. It's in the process of happening to humanity right now. And when that kicks in, which will be soon, <laughs> we'll look out. So, yeah, um, I digress. I don't think Alex is ever going to see this. I could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong. I'm, I'm, I welcome being wrong. That's fine. I got no problem with that. But in my humble opinion, I doubt Alex is ever going to see that. Or if he does, because even to Alex's own admission, he's got a lot of ego still. He might look at that and be, you know, this Dave Kelsey, you don't know what he's talking about. My view is the only real reality, and 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 I know the globalists are going to get us all, and, and we're just we're done for, and this isn't the type of positive news I was asking for. This this is all pure delusion. I I don't know what Dave Kells is talking about. He's he's been drinking the. I don't know what he's been doing. He's not. I'm going to ignore this. So you know, even if he does see it, I I, I really don't expect him to acknowledge me because a lot of what I'm saying, it, I mean, it's going to trigger most people. I'm just like calling society out on its shit and saying we're all a part of society equally. We've all been hoodwinked. We've we've all been the asshole. We've all been the Nazi. We've all let our egos rage. We've all been there, done that. So I'm not playing the blame game thing. We're all equally guilty. So, yeah, I'm not going there. But me saying that's going to get a lot of people raging. Alex may be one of them. The bigger the ego, the more the potential for rage. So if Alex even sees it at all, which I doubt, but if he does, cool. And if he rages, I respect his right to rage. That's fine. I don't have anything against him. I think he's a decent human being working with what he knows how to work with. And, you know, whatever else about him negative that you could say, those are his flaws as a human being. We're all human beings. You know, I don't, I don't think we should judge each other for that. I think we should try to make the best of things. So, you know, Alex can think what he thinks of this if he ever watches it. And I don't have a problem with that. I'll continue to respect Alex. That's fine. So, yeah. Um, I think that's really all I, I, I can say on this. I mean, can't think of anything else to say. So, happy Father's Day, everybody. Have a good day, night, evening, morning, you know, whatever it is, wherever it is in, in your neck of the woods. And, yeah, that's it. Have a good one. Catch you later. Thanks for listening to my rant. See you next time.